Hey guys, it's Fida and today I've come up with another super delicious cake recipe. So everyone loves Ferrari Rocher and that's what I'm gonna be making today. It's a Ferrari Rocher cake. I've almost tried to recreate the look of the Ferrero that's like a little pokey on the outside with the hazelnuts. So I've put on some nuts on the sides and then poured on chocolate ganache so it's gonna look exactly like the Ferrero. And then when you bite inside you have like a crunchy layer that's a wafer in the Ferrero. So in the cake also I've put a nice and crunchy meringue layer. You can totally avoid it if you want but then just to give it that crispiness I've added it. Also when you're cutting into the cake it's not going to be that smooth because the meringue layer is there. It's a bit hard to cut in because it's crunchy so if you want you can avoid it. Then we're going to be frosting it with hazelnut and chocolate buttercream which is going to be Nutella because Nutella is primarily hazelnut and chocolate as Ferrero Rochers are hazelnut and chocolate. I also have a really spongy and nice chocolate hazelnut cake recipe. It's super delicious. Then I'm also going to be showing you how to make the Nutella buttercream along with the meringue layers. We're going to assemble it, frost it and then I'm going to cut up some nuts and put it onto the sides. Then you can pour on the chocolate ganache and it's going to give that nice and pokey effect of the hazelnuts. It's super delicious so without any further ado let's get on to making it. First let's start by making the meringue layers. For that I have 1 4th cup of hazelnuts and I'm just going to powder it a little bit. Don't over powder it or else the oil from the hazelnuts will come out and it's not going to be that smooth. That's done, let's set it aside. Here I have a bowl in which I have 1 4th cup plus 2 tablespoons of all purpose flour into which I'm going to add in 2 tablespoons of powdered sugar and 1 tablespoon of normal sugar. I'm also going to add the powdered hazelnuts. And then just mix it using a spoon or a fork. And then I'm going to set it aside. Next here I have a bigger bowl into which I'm going to crack in two eggs. I'm going to separate the whites from the yolks because for this recipe the only thing that we need is the whites. A really easy way to separate whites from yolks are to use your hands and then just go to and fro. It comes out really easy and it's the easiest way if you just wash your hands. Now that's done, I'm going to start beating it. I'm using a hand beater. You can also use a stand beater. I'm going to gradually add in 2 tablespoons of powdered sugar. Add in really gradually or else you're going to deflate the bubbles that form in the egg, egg whites. Then I'm also going to add in 1 tablespoon of normal sugar. Really gradually. And then you need to continue beating it until it's nice and stiff peaks form. There you go, nice stiff peaks and then I'm just going to set the hand beater aside because we don't need it anymore. We're just going to fold the rest of the dry ingredients. It's kind of sort of making macarons. So you need to be really aggressive and then beat out all the air bubbles when you fold. So add in your dry ingredients really gradually and then just be really aggressive. Work your spatula and take out all the air bubbles in it. That's done. It has kind of become a little bit more loose in consistency. I'm going to add around half a tablespoon of lemon juice. And the batter is done. I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to transfer this to a piping bag. Next here I have a baking pan which I've lined with parchment paper. The parchment paper is drawn a big circle. This circle is 6 inches as my cake which I'm going to make is 6 inches. So I've lined it with the parchment paper and greased it with some oil. I'm just using a piping bag and just drawing around the circle. Just fill the full circle with this meringue batter and you can just use a spatula to just spread it out a little bit. Just smoothen the top out 
and then tap it quite a few times and we can keep this in a preheated oven for baking i'm also going to put it a little bit in this pan tap it and keep this also in a preheated oven and once it's baked you can take it out cool it completely and then it should come right easily if it is baked properly then it will come really easily it's really crunchy and hard so it's perfect as a nice wafer layer for the cake let's set it aside next i'm going to move on to making the chocolate hazelnut cake it's super delicious for that i'm again going to blend a little bit of the hazelnuts here i have 90 grams of the hazelnuts i'm going to grind it really well until it's powdery that's done let's set it aside here i have a bowl i'm going to add in one and a half tablespoons of all purpose flour 2 tablespoons of cocoa powder 1 and 1 4 teaspoon of baking powder a pinch of salt and then i'm also going to add in the powdered hazelnuts and just mix it using a fork or a spoon really well until everything is really well combined that's done let's set this aside Next here I have a bigger bowl in which I'm going to crack in 3 eggs. That's done. I'm going to start beating this. I'm also going to add in between 1 fourth cup of normal white granulated sugar. Add it really gradually. Adding it gradually will help it beat up a little bit more. So slowly add in the sugar and continue beating so all the sugar is added and now all you have to do is keep beating until it turns to a nice pale color it also should double a little bit in size so right now that's done it's nice and pale I'm gonna off the hand beater and you can see it's in really nice and smooth consistency right now I'm gonna pour in around two tablespoons of oil that's done and just beat it a little bit more until nicely combined and right now I'm just gonna set the hand beater aside we don't need it anymore and now all you have to do is fold in your dry ingredients so this also you're just gonna add it part by part and fold it in so here you don't have to be much aggressive just fold it in slowly really well it is going to be a crumbly though because of the hazelnuts that's fine just keep folding add it gradually and slowly fold it And right now it's all folded in really well. That's done. And let's set it aside. I have two 6 inch baking pans here lined with parchment paper and also greased with a little bit of oil. I'm going to divide this batter equally and pour it into both of the pans. Make sure you divide it properly or else you will have to level it out and make it into the same height. So right now the batter is poured, it's done and then tap it quite a few times and let's bake that. Here I have some butter in this bowl, this is 200 grams of soft and unsalted butter and we're going to make the Nutella buttercream frosting. Always make sure you use soft and unsalted butter when you're making frostings, it's going to be a bit more easier. And I'm going to gradually add in one and a half tablespoons of powdered sugar in here and then beat that really well. That's done. Just scrape down the sides in between.
I'm also going to add in half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Beat that slightly. And two tablespoons of cocoa powder. This cocoa powder will give it a little bit more of color because when you add the butter with the Nutella, it's not going to give that good color. So just a little bit of cocoa powder. Just beat that a little bit and then you can add in the Nutella. Here I have 3 4th cup of Nutella. It's not necessary to use Nutella. You can use any sort of chocolate hazelnut spread. The theme is to just include chocolate and hazelnut. That's it. Then just incorporate it with the butter and your frosting is totally ready. It's a really nice and super delicious frosting. You can use it for cupcakes plus any cakes. It has a nice and frostable consistency. So the frosting is ready. I'm going to set the hand beater aside, scrape down the sides and you can see how smooth it, it, it is. And it is also in a nice and stiff consistency which is pipeable plus frostable. So right now my cake has baked and cooled completely and I'm going to release it out of the pan. Always make sure you completely cool the cake before releasing it because this cake is a little bit too soft and there are chances when it is right hot it will just tear apart or break. So just run a knife across the sides and release it from the spring. Also make sure you take out the bot a bottom tin and the parchment paper. You can see how soft this cake is. So everything is ready and now we can start assembling. Here I have my turntable. I'm going to put a small dollop of the Nutella buttercream frosting. Keep the cake board with the cake and I'm going to brush the first layer of my cake with some sugar syrup. This cake is already really soft so it doesn't matter whether you put the sugar syrup or not. It's fine if you don't also but then I'm just going with the sugar syrup. Then spread a nice layer of the Nutella buttercream. Put on the meringue layer and again spread another layer of the Nutella buttercream. Keep your final layer of cake, brush it with sugar syrup. And then just crumb coat the full cake with the Nutella buttercream. A crumb coat is a really thin layer of frosting that will catch up all the crumbs. So when you do the final layer of the frosting, it's going to give a smooth finish and will not show any of the caught up crumbs. Now the crumb coat is done, I'm going to set this in the refrigerator for half an hour until it's completely cooled. Once that's done, I'm going to frost the cake, the final layer of frosting. So make sure you do a little bit thick layer of frosting because you also have to put in all of the hazelnuts. So a little bit of the thick frosting will be good. This cake doesn't have to be that smooth because if you have seen a Ferrero then you will know that the outside is really pokey and spiny so then when we put the hazelnuts the shape will change totally so it's fine. So now this is really done and I'm just going to keep this in the refrigerator for 10 minutes until I cut out all these hazelnuts. So right now I'm cutting out the hazelnuts and make sure you make it really pointy. Only then will that nice and spiny effect will come. That's done. My cake is out of the refrigerator after 
10 minutes I'm just gonna put one by one of these hazelnut pieces I know it's gonna take forever but then it's fine and that's done next what we need is the chocolate ganache for making that here I have one cup of chocolate chips I'm gonna put that into a big bowl along with half a cup of cream this is whipping cream if you're using heavy cream that's fine too I'm also going to add in around 2 tablespoons of normal white granulated sugar. This is optional, only if you want. Along with around 2 tablespoons of butter. The butter makes it a little bit more of smooth and nice and smooth mixture. Next, we're going to microwave this and melt it down into a smooth mixture. Right now, that's done. Just mix that really well until it's nice and smooth. And this is ready. Let's just let that cool for around 5 minutes. And let's transfer the cake into a wire rack so that all the, uh, all the chocolate ganache is caught down in the tray. Then you can start pouring the ganache. You don't need much of the ganache in the sides. You need the sides to look a little bit more realistic. So then you just need to just spread your spatula around and a very little amount of ganache should be there at the sides. And that looks amazing. Tap out any of the excess and then transfer it back into the cake board. Now all you need to do is decorate it but before that you need to completely cool it for around 2 hours. So the chocolate ganache is really set and then we can cut into the cake after decorating. So after 2 hours, here it is. The cake is totally ready. I'm just going to decorate it with some Ferreros on the top. And that's totally done. So you can see how a Ferrero is and how the cake is. So if you look at it, there are like spiny things in the outside. So that's what we have recreated in the Ferrero. And inside is the crunchy hazelnut, which we have replaced it with a hazelnut meringue. It's super delicious. So let's cut into it. It's gonna be a little hard to cut in because of the crunchy layer. And that's done. So you can see the super delicious Nutella buttercream with the crunchy meringue layer and the soft hazelnut chocolate sponge cake with the chocolate ganache and hazelnuts beside. Super delicious. Hope everyone will try it. Not only delicious, but amazing thank you so much for watching hope you liked it and if you did please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up down below also subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet thanks once again and bye bye